I'm Liliane Espinosa. Um, I'm a graphic designer and I'm here today to share uh, some themes related to, to design. Um, these are uh, very basic three tips in nature, but you can follow them uh, and maybe you should be able to create designs that at least don't suck. Well, uh, first let me tell you a little bit about me and my background. I'm from Mexico. Uh, and design has been always a very important part of my life. Um, it has been my passion since I was uh, a child. I remember playing with pencils, colors and papers instead of dolls. So when I finished my degree in graphic design at, at the University in Mexico, I decided to move to Barcelona to study a master in, in digital arts. And since then I've been working with different clients, uh, international clients, while traveling at, at the same time. Uh, I love the, the um, design and I love the fact that I can make a living as a designer. I also love the flexibility that it gives me and I just need my computer, internet access, and my passport. <laughs> so I was traveling and studying photography in Granada, Spain, when, when I met someone who said, hello, uh, I see you are a graphic designer. I'm a developer, so I think we should meet. And, and so we did. We talked a lot. And we fell in love. <laughs> and, and now, three years later, we have a very beautiful baby boy. <laughs> you might know my partner, Soren, who is also the one that got me into the Joomla world. So, I get inspired by visuals I see everywhere, especially when I'm traveling. I think it is a perfect way to understand the culture of each country. I love how you can see the personality of a city when looking at colors, people, um, posters and advertising in the streets. So this is Guanajuato, a street in Guanajuato uh, in Mexico. And, and there is uh, Copenhagen in, in Denmark. You can see uh, in both places uh, there are lots of, of colors. Um, it's not very different. They also have uh, street food and, and they doesn't look very different. At least in this photo that, that I hung picked. Um, they also have a similar way to promote their products. And they both, because they both print flyers, they, have, they both have websites. Uh, but you can see their communication style is uh, very different graphically. Mm. Mm. So it is not only for me personally that graphic design is important. It, it can literally make or break businesses about design can negatively affect product sales and can even convey the wrong message. On the other hand, uh, a great design can help uh, shape the success of a company. Just think about Apple, for example. Uh, so today I want to talk a little bit about those little things uh, that can make a big difference in design. Rules and, and guidelines that, that can have a big impact when, when we want to communicate something with graphics. So let's talk about craft design. And by craft design, I don't mean comic sense. I mean C-R-A-P design, which, which is contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. 
These are small concepts that can help uh, a lot when, when designing. So, first I would like to briefly explain, explain these concepts and then I would like to show you some real examples uh, of, of these principles applied to my own work. So let's begin with contrast, which is um, highlighting the, the important elements. Um, for, for contrast, we can try, uh, for example, using in fonts, uh, thin fonts and, and bold fonts to, to, make, to, to make a difference. Mm -hmm. We can also try with different sizes. It can be in fonts, it can be in shapes, it can be in photos, it can be in lots of different elements. We can also try playing with foreground and background. Uh, we can also use different fonts to, to have contrast or different colors. Uh, we also need to avoid some things like when, when working with thin and bold uh, or different uh, styles of, of fonts, we should avoid too many different styles in one, in one piece. When we are working with different sizes, we should also avoid um, having only slightly different sizes because it just looks like something is wrong that is not happy, it, it, it doesn't have the, the contrast that it should have. Another thing to avoid when we are working with foreground and background is not having enough contrast. It can be with colors or it can be with the same with slight, slightly different. Um, we should do it um, consciously. Um, when we are working with different fonts, we should avoid not using a lot of different fonts. And the same with different colors, not just any different colors. Here we have the, the wheel that, well, it's very interesting to, to, to see how colors uh, combined with others can have a, a very different impact. So in this circle, you can, you can always um, use it when you don't have an idea of, of which color to use combined with with, with which one. Um, it is very complex, the color theory, so I suggest uh, using, well, the complementary colors that are exactly in the opposite um, place in the, in the wheel, and also the analog colors that are next to each other. Um, I'm not going to say um, much more about color, but that you can always go to color.adobe.com and you can find lots of amazing combinations with colors that always work. So, the, the other concept is repetition. Like for example, this, this pre presentation I am, I am doing, uh, I'm always using a, a white background, I'm always using the, the first letter uh, in big, so we can easily recognize what are we talking about. Then we, uh, I am using the, the name of, of each uh, uh, principle in, in a line for, for the description, and sometimes I'm using uh, a second line when, when I need a little bit more information. Uh, the other concept is alignment. And it's about creating um, imaginary edges or lines. Mm. Nothing should be arbitrarily placed, but consciously. It is very important that you don't be afraid of white space. Um, white space uh, is your friend, so we have to, to use it and, and, and keep it simple. The other principle is proximity. Um, 
and it is about putting together related items. items. Uh, a good example for this principle can be, uh, can be this, that, uh, well, it seems like a business card, right? Um, first of all, you, you would like, yes, first of all, I would like to say that um, about the sizes uh, for, for every um, uh, element that we are designing. Like in business cards, the size is very important uh, of, of the font. For example, in, in this one, I'm using uh, a 12 point size of the font, and in the other one, I'm using a 9. And you can see a huge difference between one and, and the other. And sometimes we, we hear that 12 point size is uh, for printing. Uh, but in this case, is is not. You you should use a, a small one. Mm. So, in the in the third um, example, I'm using the proximity principle to group the information uh, in two parts, like the name and the and the charge in in the top, and then the the contact information. I'm also using the contrast. Uh, we using different colors for the the um, phone, email, website. Um, I'm aligning the the all the text in the center. And now I'm I'm having a a variation of the of the same of the same design. Uh, here, this is this is the the final version, and I'm adding even more contrast by by having more space, making the law uh, smaller. And yes, also the the font I'm using all caps in in the name and in the charge, and I'm taking away the the phone email website uh, words because. They are not necessary, and then we we win a lot of uh, white space, which is good. So this was the um, the final design. Looks nice. Mm. Okay, this quote uh, I really love it because I find it totally true. It is very often that I, that I see a, a good, very good law uh, that is very poorly applied, or vice versa. Uh, actually, I remember being very un unhappy after designing a law for a client and then looking at some application he, he did, like a, a flyer or a business card or something, and and, and it was just a shame because I, I didn't know who, who created that and, and, and he sad. So I decided to, um, to give it as a gift when I'm designing a, a logo, for example. Um, I am giving it like, like, like a, a free thing just to make sure that it's going to be well applied. Mm, and it has uh, work at least for 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 these things. Okay, so the next example I'm going to share you with you is um, one that I designed for Jumla de Granada. Um, they needed a brochure design to present to potential sponsors, so I, I decided to design a logo for them as well, um, and this is how how the streets in Granada, uh, well, the signs, the, how, how they look. So this is the logo I, I, I created for them. I used uh, a very similar font of the, of the signs in the streets. I also used a, a very similar shades of blue. And then I added uh, another color to have more contrast. Okay. So to have something, an, an element that I can easily apply to a website, to a flyer, to a poster, 
uh, I decided to, to repeat the pomegranate in, and create like a, a texture, a mosaic that, that is something related also to, to Granada. Okay, here I make a, a very quick example of how you can overuse repetition and contrast and, and end up with a very bad uh, result. Uh, you can say, yes, but I'm using all the principles, I'm using the, the contrast, I'm using the repetition, I'm using the alignment, um, I'm using um, all of that, but actually there is something that, that you always should have in mind, and it's less is more, always. Well, so, so here in the, in the Finnish version you can see um, well, it's only the, the first uh, page of, of the brochure. I'm not going to show you everything, but just an example. Um, the principles are, are still applied, but in a better way. You can see now you have more white space. Um, the, the text is divided, and the related items are together. Um, there are different sizes of everything, and it's easier to read, and, and it gets more the, the attention. Okay, let's see another example. Uh, this job was for a client <coughs> that runs a, a co-working space in Granada, mm, but it's not uh, like any co-working. You can bring your babies here and, and play in, in another area, so uh, she needed a, a flyer designed to promote their service and I already designed the, the law, so I, I generally have the, the, the style in my, in my mind. So she provided me the, the, the content uh, okay, I knew from the start that the law should be an important in an important position. So I divided the information, the contact uh, to the footer section, and and then the law and and the all the information on the on the middle. So I kind of divided everything into in four um, sections. And I also reused uh, and these illustrations that I already created for, for a video, a promote video. Okay, you can see in the third example, um, I'm using the white lines to, to kind of make a difference between a, every um, section. And I, and I am using the, um, the principles, I am using the alignment, I'm using the proximity, I'm using all the principles in that one. But yet, I don't, it was not like the, um, the result that I wanted to have. Um, there, the last one is the, is the final version, and there you can see that that it is better use all the all the principles like proximity then is grouped in I'm I'm grouping I'm dividing uh, in the dark uh, area I'm dividing in in two and um, then I'm using the how you call it the check checklist bullets um, and then on the bottom I am dividing to the the content, the information. The first one is a line, and the other one too. And okay, well, repetition for for the branding is very important. Mm. Using the same colors, the same fonts. Okay, then this is the last example that I'm going to show you. <coughs> And for yes, it's about our website. And 
The client needed a landing page to promote a region in Spain called Costa Calida for people living in Switzerland. So generally, uh, this is how it looks what the client sends me when, as a brief. Uh, it is mostly text with some logos and some sections. And the first thing that I did was grouping the similar elements and I put them together using the proximity uh, principle. <laughs> Mm, then the client wanted to have a white photo that he provided for each section. So for, for the header, we decided to have a logo and the slogan, um, which makes, makes you happy. That already existed, they, they just gave it to me. So in order to have more contrast, I made much bigger the Hola Suecia. And, and with, the uh, with the content, uh, I found out it was a lot of text, so I decided to divide it, the area in two parts. So the paragraph was smaller and also easier to read and aligned to the left. Mm, so in this area, I also separated in three parts. I used all caps in, in the beginning and then um, different styles of, of fonts. Then the, the client wanted to be super easy to, to see where Costa Calida is, so we decided to underline the, the, with a red uh, the name of the region, the region de Murcia. And, and we added a map of Spain where Costa Calida region is. And these help also to balance more the, the whole area. Okay, then when we started working with this section, we, um, we repeated the, the elements to make them easier to recognize. Um, all of them has a background photo, the same font style that is centered in white. Um, and for the subtitle, we used exactly the same, the same style too, that is divided too in, in three sections with different styles. Um, but then in, in, in sections where, where we have less text, like uh, with golf, I decided to divide the content in two and so then added another photo, which makes a little bit, um, gave, gives a break to the eye to when, when you are reading. And okay, so yeah, what else I, I, um, I would like also to add uh, some statements to, to the sign which uh, is very important to think about who is going to see the, the sign that we are doing. We have to be empathic and, and that, that means um, being in the, in, in the other side. How is the, the, the people who is going to see it, what is going to, to think about it? What are we going to sell or to who? So understanding uh, well the, the, the potential clients. Also get inspiration and see what other people have done or what the, um, the competitors have done. It's very important to, to see how are they talking to their own clients or potential clients. Uh, and then improve it not just copy or steal it, but trying to make uh, your own style. And always compare wha what you have done at, at the end. When you think it is finished, then it's good to go again and see and compare the, the result. Uh, don't always follow the rules. Mm, and and also the way you are you are saying there are something that that works better to whisper or 
to shout, right? To to make it bigger or to make it smaller. Sometimes it it uh, works. Some and, and some sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and the unexpected is fun. And that's it. Uh, I don't know if you have some questions or comments or do you want to share something? Anyone? What, one of the additional benefits or color that Adobe.com is that the contrast colors they are safe for colorblind people. Sorry? Uh, that okay. have color Adobe, Adobe uh -huh. and they offer contrast co in colors that they are safe for colorblind people. Because sometimes when you use a site, I mean a colorblind, uh, so when I, I access a site, uh, you, not, you can notice if they are not using safe colors. Colors that. Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> I don't know really about that. Um, Color, yeah, it yeah, can. Color blindness. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah it can be. Uh, yeah, yeah. But Adobe always offer uh, safe colors. Okay. Color I didn't know that. That's yeah. Interesting. Thank you. Maybe here one question. Sorry, it's. Uh, I have just a personal big one. If you are designing, it's so nice and beautiful, and you're doing this stuff probably with Photoshop or so. Yeah. Yes, I use Photoshop and I and use Illustrators. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then there comes the time that you have to transfer it to something, to I don't know what, Joomla, HTML, Bootstrap, Grid Design, you name it. And then you have this, what Vitaly Friedman told us, with grids and bigger sizes, smaller sizes, responsive and everything. How do you deal with that? In, Design. You mean with with like a logo or what? No, when you think of your design, you think, oh, I need to different here and a white space here and some repetition here, and then the evil god sends different tablets and responsive design and, and all this. Well, and you. What happens to your white line in between? Well, you you have to always think where is going to be applied what you are designing. Yeah. If it is a logo, you have to think about printing or web yeah. or even a T-shirt. Um, and also the responsive uh, design. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it is uh, necessary to know where is going to be applied your design, and yeah. then based on that. You can have solution for each problem. Yeah. Um, and when you design now, do you think for people with phones, people with Alexa speakers, or I don't know? Alexa, what, or, sorry. So, so these voice controlled stuff now search. Alexa, show me something about Spain. And because now you have different interfaces, you have laptops, you have tablets, you have voice control, Amazon stuff, you have... I, I don't know what, and, and when you think of design, it's now so much. <laughs> and I love this, because it's, it's so nice, but then suddenly the reality is there, and they want to have this, and this, and this, and this, and they say, ah, but I need this, and that. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Well, you, as I said, you have to know what, who, who is going to see it. Yeah. Who are you talking to, and and to see how how they like to to be um, uh, shown the, mm -hmm. the stuff. What are they used to to see? What 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 is their world, and and how can you go and talk to them? How do you figure out the target group of this uh, tourism website? Well, that the client should know who is their client. Really, and they say no. I mean, many times they doesn't. Yeah. But it's something that at the end I I come to my client and I say, okay, you need a flyer or something. Yeah. Who is your Who is your um, clients? Yeah, who are yeah, your yeah. clients? And sometimes they don't know. Yeah. And that is a huge uh, problem with us yeah. because then we have to do a, a job that. It's not our job, but yeah. at the end, I, I need it. I need to to have a good result, and and I have to make a more in investigation. Mm -hmm. And yes, I end up doing things that 
that doesn't concern to me. Mm -hmm. But at the end, my client know who is their their client. So yes, it's it's not easy, or it it shouldn't be like okay, you need that, I'm going to do it, and 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 then it doesn't work mm -hmm. because because you are not talking the proper way to to the audience. How do you check whether it works or not? How do you? How do you check this, whether it works or not? Well, it can be with, with views, or it can be with sales, or it can be... It, uh, I, I work with different, uh, with social media, um, with restaurants, and, and I like uh, weekly upload um, flyers mm. for restaurants, for example, or promotions weekly. And and we can measure that by by the likes mm -hmm. or by the comments or mm -hmm. by visitors in 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 the in the page in Facebook pages. Um, these days you can measure really easily than than before the with printing stuff that maybe with coupons that that people comes and I have a coupon. Oh, okay, then it's working the coupons. Mm -hmm. But these days is. Um, I think it's easier and yes, it's faster to see if it is working or not. And then they, they can see, yes, I'm having more response mm -hmm. of, of my audience. So I think having a designer that is working for me, it's, it's not like a money putting in the, in the bin. No? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that way. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. So.